Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're at, ladies and gents. I am Kure Itagami, your resident tinker and meta rotter, and this is the MetaRot News Network, bringing you all the latest developments and happenings with our favorite pet fighting robot series. Now, as we crest into the second week to officially celebrate MetaRot DS's 14th anniversary, it seems the release of the Longhorn Beetle Twins wasn't just the first surprise for us, as it was real more of a, uh, Precursor, I guess you can call it for lack of a better term, as this week we have an introduction of a brand new Osura type, which for those that are unaware, Spanagmanog, the original Osura type and the uh, final boss of Metarod DS, actually was the one of the original ones of that design that came out and actually original to DS. This new model here, as you see here, is a new successor designed by Horomarin himself to extend that line and carry on the legacy of the boss type Osuras. But not just that, we have a handful of other big announcements and news, and one very special piece of, um, one very special announcement from me too close to the end of, uh, this week's segment. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into what was officially announced for this week. Starting, of course, with the gotcha banners, of course, and boy oh boy do we have a pretty solid chunk of them coming this week. The first ones are the main ones that are going to be highlighting in particular. The first of which is, of course, the main bot itself, which will be ASR01. Ashuka Asura with a kit of Lock Shot, Wide Beam, Power Napalm, Float Legs, and the Leg Ability of, of a Battle Master. Now, the first thing you're probably going to notice here is that all four of these skills in particular, uh, all that were listed here, Lock Shot, Wide Beam, those two were from the most recently ended Go Nagai collaboration with uh, Mazen Kaiser and uh, Shin Getter. Uh, Power Napalm was introduced with Baba Pride back in the Rockman collaboration, and Float. Uh, with, and uh, Battle Master was previously with the original uh, Metsubi, the anime version of Metsubi from the Meta from the uh, Metarod Day anniversary that we had back in November. So this will be the first ever instance of those skills on a non-collaboration model, and all still very powerful in their own right. In in addition to him, we also have the original Osura type from DS, which is ASR Zero Spanag Manog, the big chunky boy himself, with a kit of Deathlock. Fire, Napalm, Float Legs, and the Leg Ability of Shuda. Then, to kind of car carry on the festivities with Metarod DS, we also have the original starters from that game too making a comeback. This time highlighting KBT-10 Gun Nose with Napalm, Power Rifle, Mega Gatling, Biped Legs, and the Leg Ability of Assail. And KWG-10 Sanjuro with Commander, Charge Blade, Thunder, Biped Legs, and the Leg Ability of Dead or Alive. Now, previously, Spanagmanog was the only one of this chunk that was only that was already capable of tune-up treatment, but that changed starting this week. With the first official additions to the tune-up roster in a pretty hot minute too, might I add, Gunnose and Sandra will be officially added to that list, with their own individual upgrades that people can farm for and, and raise if they want to make use of them on, in more competitive teams. And being completely honest, looking over those buffs, they are actually some very necessary and some very user-friendly ones too. Uh, Gunnose, for instance, both his arms being able to maintain a uh, times 1.25 damage bonus if legs are broken, and in general turning that times 1.5 regular into a times 2. Sandro getting a damage bonus with the Charge Blade as well, or a higher cooldown boost on Commander when he does choose to use it. Now with the other rerun banners that we have this week, it's going to be a relatively heavy roster, so I'm going to step to the side over here for just a minute while I introduce those. Because as you see here, it is going to be relatively busy. But this time highlighting with the, uh, with the Gods of Old theme that Spinag and Ashita are both kind of perpetuating here, we also have a rerun of all seven of Horama Rin's seven lucky gods. Starting that lineup, of course, is the first one at SFJ-01 Benten Sada, with Force Control, Static, Microwave, Biped Legs, and Premacy. SFJ-01 Joro Nanchi with Revive, Suction, Longshot, Multi-Legs, and Desert Type. SFJ-02 Fukuro Kuraofu with Rebirth, Slash, Blow Away, Flight Legs, and Climber. 
SFJ04 Ibisu Shichipuku with fight with, with fight full charge, beam sword, armor drain, sea legs, and look and through fight. On this bottom row, SFJ04 Bisha Moku Vera with Sujigiri, Pile, High Blow, Tank Legs, and Hidden. SFJ05 Hote Pushin with but Pushin with Perfect Guard, ACG Shot, Hyper Charge, Buster, Float Legs, and Charge Shot. And then last but not least, SFJ06 Daikoku Mahakata with Terminate, Power Hammer, Hyper Beam, Wheeled Legs, and Haja. Now, if the other, if the previous four of the Metaroth DS anniversary specifically really don't appeal to you in any way, that's 100% fine. You could pick any one of these seven, even at random, and you really can't ever go wrong with any of them. Each one of these seven are dangerous in their own right and have at least one very powerful skill or leg ability or leg in general that you can really use pretty much anywhere and really turn the tides in your favor. I really don't have to go into the particular definitions as to why, they pretty much speak for themselves as to how powerful they are, especially with the sheer amount, the sheer powerful aura they all possess, and unfortunately the PTSD that all seven induce when people go to take on their uh, super invasions, and even the eighth one where it's a seven round marathon against all seven of them. But with that being said, I'm gonna step right back over here real quick, thank you, as we move forward. With the Fierce Battles we have this week, it's gonna be a little lower key as well, but still all very powerful and very useful um, conventional skills all the same, especially for beginner and user-friendly parts. On this top row here, we're starting off with GTD-01 Daichenko with melee guard, missile, gatling, tank legs, and the leg ability of heavy arms. Next to him is HWK-0 Fly Falcon with triple napalm, flight legs, and a sail. And then SPW-0 Spry Tooth with hold, hammer, sword, biped legs, and spearhead. On this bottom row, we're starting with MOL-0 Horny Devil with Fire Shots, Double Missile, Wheeled Legs, and Desert Type. PLC-01 uh, Speed Alert with Mobile Boost, Thunder, Gatling, Wheeled Legs, and Emergency. And then last but not least, MON-02 Kiru Mashuda with Heal Trap, Double Sword, Biped Legs, and Spearhead. Now, being completely honest, you can really pick any one of these six as well. And not really go wrong because they all offer something very useful. Uh, Kiru Mashiro in particular for very co for conventional swords, uh, Horny Devil for wheeled legs with desert type, speed alert for easy access to conventional boost, uh, support skill and boosts, um, Fly Falcon, Daichenko, Sprite 2, same thing, all of them are very good. If I did have to give an MVP of the week to somebody though, I primarily would have to give it to Horny Devil, primarily because wheeled legs already do have a very good base mobility but terrible terrain compatibility. So if you pair that with, with, with a terrain that almost nothing is good on except flight legs, this is going to be a good way to make sure that you don't get anti-aired out of the sky before the fight even begins. They might be a little expensive of course, but of course a little investment never always goes a long way in the long run. We do have another sec uh, second wave of, event of an event to celebrate Metarot DS's anniversary. This time around, though, we're celebrating with a brand new event type, which I will explain in just a moment. But the rewards are also going to be relatively low as well, I guess, as they're trying to use this as a testing ground. Just to kind of make sure that this behaves as it should. This time around, for the second wave of this event, we have an opportunity to earn a limited time skin for Spanag Manog himself. Kind of taken on the same design and color scheme as the upgrade Ashuta Asura. So, no real other rewards were mentioned, no medals or meta rotters or anything else, this is pretty much it. So, if you are relatively new to the game, or if you've not collected anything of Spinag and he doesn't really appeal to you, this may or may not be a reward that you might be, might be interested in farming for, but the resources all the same are still very useful um, if you do choose to participate. Now, with the new event in particular, it it's going under the name of Meta Meister, which kind of is taking on the same... Kind of taking on the kind of like the appearance and behaviors of the old um, robot uh, meta rotter license challenges in Metarot 7. But to explain this challenge, and this is just the way I understood it, it's a brand new event, so it's kind of hard to tell how it's going to behave or if it's going to be a good event or a bad one. Primarily because it's again kind of be kind of be kind of hard to tell until we see it. But the breakdown of how this event behaves: there will be seven fights in total, each one progressively more difficult than the last until the very last day, where of course will be the hardest challenge of them all. You can complete the levels to earn points, much like you would with a milestone-based event. 
However, if you use an equipped bonus bot part, you get a set of bonus points upon completion. And they also mention specifically that if you use bonus bots, they also get a percentage of a stat boost permanent during that particular challenge. So if they weren't, so if you aren't necessarily fully capped with the bots in question, the game is kind of willing to throw you a bone with this event and just kind of see how it goes. There are also, there are also additional missions that you can complete as well for bonus points on top of that to kind of help guarantee that you keep that you can maintain the highest score possible when completing those when completing those challenges. You can complete those to earn those rewards as you ascend through each of the rankings, as it's going to be kind of a kind of like a meta kind of like a meta league ranking system. Not really sure how that's gonna play out, but I'm just kind of playing it by ear based on translation. Um, there is also a you can also score above a certain threshold to earn additional bonus points on top of that and extra uh, rewards such as rubies and ruby shards. And there, they did also mention leaderboards present for score matching. Again, I'm not 100% sure how this is going to play out or behave because it is a brand new event type, but I am going to try to keep an open mind as this does officially go live, just to see if it is actually going to be really good or if it's just an idea that's going to kind of fade into the background after this week. But again, they just as a friendly reminder, there is a milestone base, so pure sets are encouraged, and on that note, here you are with those bonuses. The main primary bonuses, as you see here, um, of course, Ashuta Asura will give you that 15% bonus per part each. Uh, Ragnar 6 Twins left and right form will give you a 12% bonus per part. All of the reruns, which are all 7 of the Lucky Gods, Spinag, Gunno, Sanjuro, and Brightness, oddly enough, but likely as another DS uh, representative, will give you a 5% bonus each per part, and the Fierce Battle Bots at a 3% bonus per part each. For Meta Rodders, it's going to be the same case. It'll be a 15% bonus for any SR ranked Meta Rodder that is used, which really shouldn't be too hard because all of them are available in the permanent Meta Rodder pool anyway, and a 5% bonus for the R rank respectively of those same Meta Rodders of uh, Azuma, Arase, His uh, Hikaru, Iki, or Nai, and for the end rank it also includes Chitos and uh, as well as um, Ohaku. So it is going to be a relatively... Well, I don't want to be—I don't want to lie and say it's going to be an easy event. It's kind of hard to tell. But as far as bonuses are concerned, if you've been keeping up with with pulling from them, especially from the seven lucky gods in particular, because all seven of those are honestly just game-bustingly broken. I'm just gonna—I'm just gonna be out and say it. It really shouldn't be too terribly difficult, especially with the um, with the meta rotter bonuses on top of that. And it is also worth noting as a friendly reminder that these same boxes will also get a percentage of a of an all stat bonus when participating in these fights. So they will fight just a little bit faster, a little bit harder, and be a little bit tougher if you if you choose to use those specific bots. Of course, it will be in the same order priority as listed here with them. Ashita will give, of course, the highest bonus possible with that stat bonus. Everyone else, progressively, just a little bit until you get to the fierce battles, which are really more than like a 1% at most. One other thing that they were highlighting as well, aside from all the quality of life updates, such as the um, such as the change to how you can scroll through all of the gotcha banners, or um, the quality of life with the, with the removal of linking to Facebook and Twitter with your game account only through Google from going forward, it is also worth noting that they highlighted the new 48 hours limited time start dash gotcha banner. And to explain this briefly, because again, more information was given on it, it is a paid banner, first of all, which means you have to buy rubies from the web store if you want to actually pull from this. However, if what I understand is correct, you will also have the opportunity to earn a limited ticket from this banner. When you, when you collect this particular ticket, you can redeem it for a, for a pickup model of your choice from the selected list. If you missed out on Particle and have not had the chance to collect her, well, if you're willing to shell out just a few bucks because the yen is actually kind of weak right now, you are able to go ahead and collect her with the redemption of that ticket. Again, I'm not going to advocate that you spend money on a mobile game because that's not right of me. Spend wisely, spend at your own discretion, but it is here. It's no real tell There's no real telling if this is going to come and go, but I highly expect it might. So it wouldn't hurt to maybe invest one time or maybe even twice just so you can get it and redeem for maybe one or two sets that you've been really kind of trying to push for. Now, that's all the game stuff aside. Now, I have one particular special announcement coming from your old pal Kura here that is kind of leading up to, what's to what to expect going into next week. Now, for those that have been paying attention to me on Twitter and on Discord, I have mentioned in the past that next week, 6-4, uh, will be my channel's third anniversary. And, um, 
being completely honest, I, I didn't actually think I'd make it this far. I'm, I'm shocked at the support and the encouragement and the friends I've made along the way with this. Um, I'm not going to get super gushy now. I'm going to save that for next week. But I do have a little bit of a teaser I want to give you guys. I've been exceptionally hard at work this last week for a very big project I've been teasing on Twitter and on Discord, like I said. I'm not going to show you everything of what it is, because that obviously ruined the surprise. But I am going to give you a little bit of a teaser with it. And that is a brand new logo and icon that I hand drew myself based on my original one that was made by me, by, by my friend Callie. Um, that I, I will be using for my channel going forward starting this week. Um, since I obviously re released this early. So, I honestly really like the original logo. Callie did a fantastic job when she rendered it for me and used and I've been using it all these three years. But to kind of fit with the current art style that I've been going with, especially since I hand drew my model, um, I kind of felt that for my third anniversary I should change it up just a little bit, use something a little fresher, maybe alternate between them every once in a while. But this will be my new icon and logo going forward when you guys look for me on YouTube. So I did want to kind of show this off as the first official teaser. I have a very big project plan. I think it's pretty much right where I want it. And you guys, I really, really, really hope you're going to like it. Because honestly, the way it comes out, I might be using that more permanently, more conventionally once this, uh, once, once my anniversary does come and go. But I won't say anything more about it. It's big. I'm really excited for it. And I really hope you guys will be able to tune in with me next week as we celebrate that anniversary and another little special event on top of that stands any other additional Metarot news that comes with Metarot S. Now, enough about me though, going forward, back to uh, community stuff with Rising Beetle. We are still always looking for translators to assist us with any current projects or endeavors, such as the translations with Metarot 3 and 4. We still need playtesters and bug cleaners to kind of help us out with, um, with Metarot 3s before we can call it complete, because it's mostly just grammar checks and a couple minor translation bugs that we need to fix and that it's basically finished. But we also need help to assist us with, say, Metarots 4 and 5 and Navi, or any other projects that we'd like to work on as well. So if you are knowledgeable in any coding, cleaning, Japanese, or if you know somebody that might be willing to lend a hand, definitely feel free to send them our way, join our Discord, ask around, and we'll get you in touch with the right people to fill you in on what has been done and what still needs done up to this point. With the weekly art highlights here on the MNN, of course, this is one of my favorite elements of this of every week, kind of just showcasing art for the community. I found this one here by Twitter user MousePieceF, and I'm going to continue calling it Twitter because X I think is stupid. But I digress. This one here highlighting just kind of a final farewell to the Go Nagai collaboration, which ended a couple weeks ago, kind of highlighting all of the models present, as well as uh, our, our old pal Odyssey, which is one of the main uh, pro tags of Metarot S. And being completely honest, I, I enjoyed the Gonagai collaboration. It, it was very fun, very well thought out. Lots of very powerful models that everyone collected and really enjoyed on. And the nostalgia trip that all five models gave us was honestly really nice to have as well. And this piece here by Twitter user Pikugatu highlighting both of the Ragnus 6 twins, which kind of which made their debut last week as we got both of them at once. It was It's honestly not hard to look for art because every time a new model comes out, there's always fan art for it somewhere within a few hours. And I honestly love that. I, I honestly love that there's still such a very vibrant life force in the Metarock community when it comes to fan art and everything like that. And I just want to kind of give back to that by highlighting just a few of these artists every week. Uh, one final note before I do wrap us up, just as a friendly reminder, I am open for commission as well. I can do 2D art, I do 3D, I do live 2D models ready to rig. My 3D models are fully rigged, textured, optimized, and ready to go if you do need them. I can do emotes, animated actually now, I can do basic emotes, I do standard 2D art of varying degrees of complexity. So if you are knowledgeable, if you are looking for something that can maybe get you started on your content creation career, or if you need something cheap and affordable while you are beginning, definitely feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or on Discord and we can try to make something happen. But with all that being said, I do believe that covers everything for this week's episode, so like I said, it's going to be kind of shaky this week with this new event incoming, but the introduction of the new Osra type is going to be pretty exciting all the same. But with that being said, if you'd like to know more, you can follow us below on Facebook at the Metarot News Network page, or the Metabots Forever community on there that I do also manage, which is still skyrocketing past 22,000 members and still growing by the day, and its activity is just skyrocketing as well. I'm so proud of it. You can also join us on Discord in the link provided and in the comments below to keep an even closer ear to the ground on the action. 
This includes any new links to merchandise, contests, fan art, my weekly episodes, or anything else related to our favorite fighting robots. That's the first place you're going to hear it before it goes anywhere else on the net. You can also reach out to me personally on disc on uh, Twitter at Itsagamikura as well. If you have any questions, feedback, comments, or if you'd like to commission me, or if you are a content creator on any platform and would love to collaborate with me sometime, especially now that I'm kind of venturing uh, uh, away from MetaRot primarily as a full-time and starting to actually do more conventional streams on Sundays with the art stuff or even with just regular games as well, feel free to reach out to me. We'll coordinate some schedules and absolutely make something happen. On the topic of content creators, I do want to highlight my dear friend Sane at Sane Cisco on Twitter, who just announced that their new version model will be officially going live and debuting here very soon. I'm very proud to see that in the development. Sane is a wonderful friend of mine. If you'd like to see a lot of their stuff on their Insane podcast or even join on their Discord and communities, definitely give them a follow, ask around, and just tell them you're all th that your old pal Kura sent, sent you their way. And do also highlight the official Rising Beetle Twitter as well. I've not highlighted this one in the past because it's been a relatively dormant page for a while, but thanks to some dear friends of mine in the community, it has been spruced up and started commenting and posting stuff almost on the daily or the weekly, with their own weekly uh, Metarot of the Week uh, that, 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 that they do highlight on, so definitely give them a follow to show the Western community your support as well. But, with all that being said, as always, I do appreciate you all for stopping by just as you always do. And until next time, this is your host, Kura Isagami of the Metarot News Network, signing out.